want you on the field doing sideline reporting. Right. Right. Man on the street interviews. Bob Costas. He's good, dude. I love Bob Costas, man. Just tell me when we go. And we're live here at Post Oak Little League, the Miners Division. We have today the mighty Muscles versus the Tin Caps. Tin Caps taking the field now. Kyle Harris alongside Greg Moore here today. Greg, tell me about the day. Thanks, Kyle. I appreciate it. It's good to be with you. The Muscles just took the field of the home team. We got, uh, looks like, Lucas Grandmaier at first. We got Declan Breen at second base. We've got Hayes Toomey starting at shortstop. We've got Colt Bell at third. Nico Juarez on the mound tonight for the Muscles. Big decision for them. They've got a bunch of good pitchers, but they're going with Nico tonight. I think that a lot of that has to do with how good Hayes Toomey is at shortstop. You watch him out there. He's one of the best defensive players in the league. I think he could be the best shortstop in the league, best first baseman in the league, best catcher in the league, best center fielder in the league. He may be one of the best pitchers in the league, but they don't use him there that much because of how good he is at shortstop. And they've also got Nico, and then they've got Colt Bell as well. Really good pitching team. It'll be interesting to see whether it's a low-scoring game. These teams have been off for a long time. We've had a lot of rain, Kyle. Yeah. Um, and it's been a while since they've hit. So it'll be interesting to see who has the advantage of the pitchers or the hitters. Yeah, absolutely. I was here yesterday watching the, the Angels-Astros game. It ended up being a low-scoring game. The Astros got the win 2 to nothing over the Angels, and that 
that semifinal game. It's a beautiful day out here in Post Oak Blue League. No rain, no rain in sight, so that's good to see. And the outfield, for, for those of you watching at home, Taylor Baskin is in left field. Oliver Andrews is in center field. And we've got... Um, Matthew. Matthew Bennett in right field. Uh, All right, we got the first hitter for the uh, 10 caps coming up to the plate, Kyle. All right, looking forward to it. Coming up to the plate for the 10 caps, number 22, their pitcher today on the mound, Dylan Freeman. Another interesting choice right there from the 10 caps, going with Freeman on the mound today. Uh, they've got a couple really good pitchers. Pit, the 11 year olds, they can go 85 pitches tonight. So, will that get you six innings? Maybe, maybe not. You might need more than one pitcher. They're starting with Freeman. Freeman led the entire league this year in runs scored. He's one of the fastest kids in the league, fastest kid on the on the team. Well, that's, that must be why they got him bad first, right? Get him on the bases. Well, that and his dad's the coach. It's yeah, obvi okay. obvious daddy ball here gotcha. from Scott Freeman coaching first. A little fly ball down the right field line. It's foul ball. Foul ball. Strike one. A big matchup of coaches tonight. we got Scott Freeman and Alexander Dwyer. Noted athleisure attorneys uh, versus the uh, khaki short crew for the muscles. Ah. We've got. Uh, Not connected. What's the problem, you think? Oh, so then the video's fine. So, yeah, we're, we're still good on audio then, so it's just that camera. Good uh, deal. Cole base. Bell, yep. nice play. Cole gets him at first. Hard grounder to third by Dylan. It's a good swing. This late in the season, though, you hit a grounder to third, you're expecting that kid to make that play, and he made it. That's what makes the muscles so tough. They don't make a lot of mistakes. I scored right. at home with me. That's a 5-3. We'll play to uh, third base over there. Looks like we, we got Everett nice. Wolcott up, pop up. Gran Maye makes the play at first. There we go. Nice play right there. And, and this is tough for the visiting team, right? You, you got to hit first. Your first two hitters come up, they have good at-bats, but they make outs. That can affect you as the game goes on. Don't get off to a good start. All right, McFall here. Really good player. Uh, played a lot of different positions this year for the 10 caps. Has moved around. They just put him at catcher here in the playoffs, which is a yes. tough move. Yeah, hey, it's the toughest position on the baseball field in my book. And so. to hardly play it all year long, and now he's playing a bunch there. He's going to play there tonight. Really impressive stuff. And a gutsy move from, from Freeman and Dwyer. You know, changing the lineup up. They've been great all year long. Second best team in the league, and they're willing to change it up. Swing and a miss from McFall. Nico blows him away. One, two, three. Hardly threw any pitches that inning, Kyle. That matters, too. Yeah, nice job there uh, by the mighty muscles to get out of that one. Ten cups taking the field now. We'll be right back here on Vipe Live. Welcome back to Post Oak Little League. Kyle Harris alongside Greg Moore here. And we have Mighty Muscles taking the field, the number one seed, the home team, uh, trying to win win advantage here going into the next game. Greg, talk to us about it. Well, you're, you're half right. It's the 10 caps taking the field. We just saw the Mighty Muscles go one, two, three arm. Trip Harper's at first base for the 10 caps. We got Ryan Swinbank at second base. Got Everett Walcott there at shortstop. 
Uh, in the outfield, we've got Dino Dwyer in center field. Looks like we got Matthew McFall behind the plate. Everett Casas in right field. I can't tell quite who we've got in left field right now, but yep. we'll figure that out and we'll let you know. Johnny Goodrum. Johnny Goodrum out there on left, yeah. So Goodrum's out on the left and Everett's out on right. That's right. we okay. got a, the lefty Johnny Goodrum out in left field. They're just tossing it around. They just went down to second. About to get this inning started. Perfect. Key for Freeman is to throw strikes right here. Uh, Hayes Toomey, one of the fastest kids in the lead, leading off for the uh, muscles here. Oh. oh, he got hit in the helmet. Yeah. Knocked his helmet right off. Wow. He tried to get back in the box, Kyle. He didn't want to take his base. Go, go. First pitch, hit by a pitch there for Mr. Toomey, and he's going to go over first base. I did, you're right, Greg. I don't think he wanted to. I think he wanted to get back in there and swing. Look like it. He's one of the fast kids. Expect him to try to steal here or at least go a half steal and force that throw. We'll see what McFall does. But that's what it's, it's tough about these teams is they can play behind the plate. Toomey didn't try to go. Ball one. Probably, you know, you, just, probably just taking a breath after getting hit in the head right there, you know, with a pitch. He's ready to run. Oh, swing and a drive. Wolcott dropped it. They called it safe. They said he didn't transfer it, and now we're going to get a double play. Wow. Yeah, that's the wrong that call. That's the wrong call from the, the umpire out there. Yeah, um, he was trying to transfer it into his hand. He caught the line drive. And they they should have called batter out. Yeah. Um, tough call there. Yep, coming up now to the plate for the muscles, number nine first baseman, Lucas Grandmaya. You pronounce that right? You nailed it. Went to high school with his dad. Hi dad was a great basketball player in high school. I bet Lucas is too, but he's a great baseball player. Lucas and Hayes and Nico Juarez were all in the muscles last year in 2022 when they won this title. Gotcha. So muscles trying to come back as reigning champions here. Two balls, no strikes. Good pitch by Freeman. Looked like he might have been taken there. Yeah, the righty Freeman, quick. Back here on the mound, the pitch. And that one's high for ball two. Count goes to three and one, excuse me. Can't always trust the uh, scoreboard out here, Kyle. <laughs> Don't I know. And that's got by the catcher there, that's walk. And Take look at Lucas, Lucas fly down to first on the wild pitch, ball four. That's good coaching right there from Levitt and Breen. Here comes Nico hitting cleanup. Nico's been one of the biggest surprises of the year. He's been one of the best pitchers in the league this year, has ripped the ball at the plate, really shown what he's made of. That one's high for ball one. I really like Nico's choice of number 99. You don't see it. Uh, you didn't see it as much back in the day, but as you start to see kids now taking up that number again. So. Kid's got a lot of personality. He, he's a uh, he's a musician. He can rap. Uh, he hit in the home run derby with Crocs on and made the finals, which is tough to do. Just wanted to be comfortable, right, Greg? I guess. <laughs> I guess. Kid's got some swag. Oh, yeah. And the 1-1 one, one count. That one's about back to the backstop. Count goes to 1-2. and two. See, Nico, Coach Breen knew him from Pee Wees. Coached him on the Rebels a couple years ago in Pee Wees and was lucky to have him fall where he did and snapped him up. It's been a real difference maker for the muscles this year. Suarez fouls that one back. Counts remains at one and one, or one and two, excuse me. No attempts to steal yet. But he's battling up there. You gotta, you gotta appreciate that, Nico. Not wanting to go down on this one-two count. So here we go, one-two. He's throwing him a bunch of fastballs. Does he have something off speed that he could show him here, and maybe get him off, off balance? He's fouled off a couple fastballs. He's on it. He's probably not gonna blow it by him. Can he take something off? And the pitch from Freeman. That's it. He tried. He yeah. tried to. Way this high. is the right time to do it. Wasn't a good execution. And now it's 2-2. I'd tell my pitchers not to mess with the curveball, breaking ball with two balls. And he, he threw a high fastball. That'll do it for the first inning. Got through four batters there. We're through one, still scoreless out here. Muscles zero, tin cap zero here at Post Oak Little League. Here at Bite Fly.
All right, welcome back here to Post Oak Little League. Got the muscles taken. Yes, sir. Can you can you please leave that over there? It's for the crowd, Mike. Next up, number I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Get, you, though. Getting some help from the kids. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. appreciate it. Always good when they pick up the microphone for you. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right. Is this is this Trip Harper here for this the 10 caps? Yeah. This is Trip Harper. Oh, good. Trip is having an amazing playoffs. He's hitting 857. Freeman told me he's the best first baseman in the league. I'm not quite sure about that, but he's been great this year. He's only made one error all year. Led this team with 22 RBIs. That's a lot of RBIs oh, in, yeah. in 18, 19 games. Oh, yeah. Yesterday I was able to see um, Smith from the Astros, I believe. Not sure what his first name was, but he ended up throwing like 17 strikeouts. A lot of them were drop Ks, but, you know, still 17 strikeouts a big number. As, Freem as uh, Harper takes that one in for ball two. Yeah, two and, two, and two and one now. Nice pitch there. It's in there for a strike. Count goes to two and two. Got Nico. Nico he, Suarez or Juarez? Juarez. Juarez. He's Juarez pouring it in there, man. He throws, he throws strikes. He went to three two. That was a close pitch right there. You, most of the umpires out here give you an inch or two off the corner, particularly the outside corner, and they'll call it down about an inch. Might be a little tighter today. Full count pitch, and it's right in down there. the middle. Strike three, and Trip Harper goes down looking for the first out of the inning. You got to tell these guys two strikes. You got to swing it in close. It's one of the hardest things to get them to do. Let's get ready to hit that pitch with two strikes, and know that these umpires are going to call strikes out here. All right, now we got number 27, Dino Dwyer, up for the 10 caps. Dino's a really good hitter, lefty. He stands in there. First swing is a miss for strike one. Count goes to 0-1. Dino plays third in center field for the 10 caps. When he swings, he usually hits it, and, and he did there. It's the left side short Hayes stop. Toomey. Got it. Look at the way he charged that ball. The how quick the transition was, and he fired it with everything he had over to first. You don't see that out here. You see guys make that play, but they make it a lot slower than that. That's really impressive from Hayes. Completely agree with you there. Nice 6 3 ground out there for the muscles, and now up for the 10 caps. Number 14, Everett passes, and he swings and misses that first one for strike one. Everett is a really hard worker. He's, he's worked really hard on his swing, he's a good hitter. Nico is firing today. Yeah, he's looking good up there on the bump. He's got a Mo2 now. Guy hadn't shown he can hit your fastball. Put it right back in there. He threw something off speed. Got the called third strike. Yep, Everett Casas goes down looking. Third strikeout of the inning. We go to the bottom of the second, still scoreless. 10 cap zero, Mighty Muscle zero here on Bike Live. Bottom of the second inning, still scoreless here at Post Oak Little League between the Mighty Muscles and the 10 Caps. Coming up to the plate now for the Mighty Muscles, number 12, Taylor Baskin. Taylor is the only girl in the minors this year, and she has more than held her own in this league with the boys. She's been a fantastic catcher and outfielder for the Muscles. She has absolutely ripped the ball this year. She's got some older brothers. Her dad was a college baseball player. 
This girl's got a lot of coaching. Yeah, no, you could tell as she comes into the box, the lefty, she's playing left field today. Uh, and the first pitch is in there, she swings at. This is down the right side foul for strike one. All right, they're leaving Freeman in there. He's in there for the second inning. We'll see if these uh, hitters in the middle of the order can come through for the muscles. They've been great for him this year. Good eye there from Baskin. Count goes to one and one. Good crowd out here tonight. This one's foul back to the backstop. That's going to be strike two. Count goes to one and two. I like, I like how she was already on her way, though, to the base, you know, not, not staring and looking at the ball like you do see at a lot of these ages, you know, yeah. already going down to first base. That's right. She was ready to go. High fastball. Got her. Nice job, though. Went down swinging, which, which is big, but really, really nice job from Dylan Freeman on the mound. He's doing a great job. Yep, two strikeouts so far and, and having the team help him behind him with that double play in the first inning. He's generally been the number two starter for this team behind Everett Wolcott. It'll be interesting to see as the game goes on, if Freeman keeps being this good on the mound, do they put do they put Everett in there? Now it's popped over to the third base side. Third baseman's got it for the 10 cap. Dino Dwyer, great play over there at third. Dino Dwyer, great, great play. And, and you notice the 10 caps are moving it around. They're playing different guys at different spots. We've got Ryan Swinbeck at second. We've got Leo Kanagani in right field. And that first pitch to Oliver Anders is a strike for strike one. Oliver's a really good hitter. He's got a lot of pop in his bat. Nice swing. That one's down to the right base side. Second baseman's got it, thrown to first, and that'll do it. Ground out 4-3. Great play by inning. Swinbank. Really good job. Hard hit ball by Anders. He did everything you're supposed to do right there. Great play by the second baseman. Great job by the 10 caps. We'll see the mighty muscles out there in the field in the top of the third. Still scoreless here on Vibe Live. Scoreless Johnny Goodrum coming up to the plate for the 10 caps. Let's see if the uh, latter half of the 10 caps order can get on base here against Nico. Yep, that first pitch in there taken by Johnny for strike one. Nico's throwing strikes today. They're taking a lot of pitches. Yeah, three strikeouts on the game for Nico so far. Swung on and missed at that high one for strike two. Count goes to two. Interesting, Nico working out of the stretch, nobody on the plate. Swings and misses there from Johnny Goodrum for strike three. Goes down swinging for the first out of the inning. Looked like he might have taken something off on that one. Yeah. yeah, but I like I like the approach by um, by the pitcher for the Mighty Muscles, Nico Juarez, to, to work out of the stretch rather than the windup. You see the windup being used so much nowadays with, with nobody on base. Well, he can be consistent. He can keep that motion. Now, these kids don't have to hold guys on, so they can go out of the windup even with runners on base with these rules. Interesting. That's good to know. Thank you. 
it's really hard when they play tournaments that have open bases, you know, real baseball rules, because then that added element of holding that runner on is a big distraction to a lot of these pitchers. Yep. This one's hit right back to Nico. Throws it over the first for the second out of the inning. It's good to get Connor right there. Connor's a really good hitter. He drew an incredible amount of walks, 18 walks this year from Connor, which is really ungodly. I mean, you can't walk that much just taking pitches. You've got to foul off a bunch of tough pitches to walk that much. Absolutely, as now we're seeing Leo Kenaganti. And we saw Leo playing right field in the last inning. Leo was one of the best catchers in the Pee Wees last year. This 10 Caps team is so stacked that they've got him in right field. That, that is a real sign of how strong this team is. That's fouled back for strike two. Because Leo was on the best team in the Pee Wees last year, the Irish, he was their catcher. And he was great. Yeah. Uh, really dominated the, the guys on the base paths. Um, so to see him in the outfield is impressive. And this one's hit to the left side. Third baseman kind of fumbles with it, throws over to first, tried to scoop it to first baseman, but that's going to be safe for Leo Kanagani. He got the, that's going to be the first hit of the game there for the Tin Caps. So a nice little single there from Leo. Gray Farina coming up to the plate now. That's your call is the official score, that's a single? Uh, I'll talk to you. <laughs> that is my call. I yeah. will tell you. If it's hit to the left side, and that, is that takes on strike one? You I, could, I think if you asked Colt but, Bell, and I bet you if you asked his daddy, he'd say he should have made that play. For sure. 100%. 100%. But I see it on the AAA level all the time, and I see these guys thinking they can make the play, and they end up not doing it. If it's a score, scores it a hit. So. That's right. That's right. There's a lot of dads out here call everything a hit. They don't know what an error is. But I'll tell you, Colt Bell has been an impressive player for the Muscles this year. He took three years off of baseball and came back this year and has been one of the best players in the league. That's, that's tough to do. Baseball is a learned skill sport. It's not a sport you roll out of bed and are good at. Uh, if you're good, if, you're, if you can jump high and run fast, you can be good at basketball, football. you got to practice to be good at baseball. So to take three years off and come out here and play as well as he did is a real testament to his talent. You're absolutely right, Greg, and it's about consistency, if you don't mind me saying. Like, you got to be consistently out here on the on the baseball field improving day in and day out as Gray Farina takes that one. We go to a full count. Big pitch the, right here. Caps, Big pitch. First. Yep. Leo right. at first. We'll see what happens. I love full counts in baseball. Dude. Especially with two outs. He was taken, yep. and strike Nico three. put it right in there, strike three. You can't count on Nico to do it for you. They're going to have to hit their way on base today. Really good job by the Mighty Muscles to get out of that runner at first base. We go to the bottom of the third inning, still scoreless here at Post Oak Little League. Welcome back into Post Oak Little League. My name is Kyle Harris alongside Greg Moore. And beautiful day out here at Post Oak Little League. Uh, sunny skies out here in the city of Houston, Texas, and, and wonderful day to play baseball. As we have up to the plate now for the Mighty Muscles, number 22, Cold Bell, swings that one foul for the first pitch. Count goes to 0-1. Dylan Freeman still on the mound for the 10 caps. Oh, yeah. 
who's going to break through first. Once you get to the third, it may be who scores first who wins this game. And that one low and outside for ball one. Yeah, that, that's exactly how my night went yesterday, Greg. It was the Astros scoring first in the bottom of the third, and uh, they won the game two to nothing. So we'll see. Maybe first, first person that scores wins this one as it's been a pitching dominant matchup as that one's high and inside for ball two. He threw a good first pitch, but those last two have not been close. How quick is the hook from his dad? Be very interesting if he starts to struggle. Mm, tough call there. Borderline pitch, called it high. Good eye, good eye. Hitters count now, 3-1. Getting a leadoff runner would be a big deal in a game like this. He looked like he was taken all the way on 3-1 there. Yep. Yep, he was taken all the way on a hitter's count. Now we got full count here. See how Colt Bell responds. And that Put it in the dirt. dirt. Yep, ball four. Nice job for Mr. Bell. He's got a good eye over at the plate to get the first runner on for the Mighty Muscles. The Muscles have been doing this all year. They get on base, they get a couple hits, they knock in a few runs, and then they pitch great and beat you. Now we've got Harrison Levitt up to the plate, number 13 for the Muscles. Harrison's got one of the sweetest looking swings in the league, and he's grown into it this year. He's been fantastic. Swing and miss on the first pitch from Freeman. Looked like it was on the outside corner. Harrison's got to stay in there. He's got a really good swing, though. Good contact hitter. Swing and miss again. Making a liar out of me, Harrison. <laughs> He looked a little nervous there. It looked like he might have jumped at that ball. I left these in there ready for the pitch, and that one takes it, and that's in there. Might, the have, been, might have been a breaking ball there. Yeah. It looked like he put something, something on that. Way to hang, Harrison. Just, to the backstop. just putting it in play here. Makes, make him make a play. Especially with no outs, runner at first base. No, just put the ball in play and yeah. see, how the, see how the 10 caps respond. That's right, and that's what the muscles have done this year. They put the pressure on the defense. They're good base runners. Oh, good pitch by Freeman. Painted the outside corner, swing and miss by Harrison. Yeah, and leave it goes down swinging for the first out of the inning for the muscles. Coming up now, number 23, Robert Wallace. Yeah, Robert, we Robert Wheelis coming up here. He goes to Second Baptist. Coach Breen and, and Robert's dad played on an undefeated Pee Wee team together that lost in the championship. Didn't want to have to bring that up. <laughs> but Coach Breen has some losing experience in championship games. Oh, that ball's to the backstop and Bell's to second base. Hey, we got a runner in scoring position, Kyle. So official scorer here, what do you call that, a wild pitch or a pass ball? That's a wild pitch. There you That's go. a wild pitch. He, he was a far outside on that one. There you go. But now you got a runner in scoring position, Mr. Bell, over there second base. All, all Robert's got to do is get a hit. You got one out here. Good pitch right there, called strike. Count goes to one and two. And that's in there. Oh, good pitch. Inside corner, rung him up. Wheelis didn't like it. That was a good pitch right there. Yeah, throws Wheelis there. Really, really great job by the pitcher, Dylan Freeman, tonight. He's been fantastic for the 10 Cups, if you don't mind me saying. He's been right. great. He's been great. He's got two outs here, that runner on second. They just got to finish it off here. We got Matthew Bennett up for the muscles. Foul ball from Bennett. He has really come on this year. He's been getting better and better. He's the most improved player on the team, according to Freeman. Wow. Big Best player on the team, but they got him batting 11. Most today. improved player oh, on the improved. team. And he really has. I've seen it as the season's gone on. Yeah. He's really making good contact, started getting some good hits for them. Well, that was a great eye. I, I honestly would have called that a strike if I would have been behind home plate, but but he did a really good job of seeing that ball. Stay in your lane, Kyle. Come on. <laughs> it's my job to criticize the umpires out here. <laughs> oh, too funny. Foul ball from Bennett. We got one ball, two strikes now. Can Freeman finish him off? It's one of the biggest at-bats of the game right here. Four strikeouts on the day for Freeman. And he got him. Swing and a miss. Great pitching tonight. Really, really good pitching there from Freeman. And the 10 Caps are able to get out of that one with the runner on second in scoring position. We go to the fourth inning, still scoreless. 
10 cap zero, muscle zero on Vipe Live. Little League, really a championship game. I mean, one and two seed. I mean, I know it's not technically the championship game, but we have the best two teams here in this age division at it. And right now, it's been a big, big pitching matchup. Defense been able to take care of the job so far. We go the fourth inning, still scoreless. And Nico Flores still on the mound here. And I don't have the Four pitch count, Kyle, but he hadn't thrown that many pitches. He should be able to keep going and probably finish this game if he keeps being this effective. Ryan Swinbank leading it off for the 10 caps. Ryan goes to Memorial Drive Elementary. He had nine double plays this season, which has got to be a record. He has the highest baseball IQ on the team, according to Freeman and Dwyer. He played a lockdown second base for him this year. And they like hitting him here in what they call the double leadoff position, the last spot yeah. in the order. A fast kid who can turn it over and get on in front of your good hitters. I like that, the double leadoff man. I really like that as he, he's got a 1-1 one, one count here from Nico. Taking his time, doing a little in the batter's box swing. You don't see that in the in the professional league game where they don't have no time like that. I sit next to the FTC That's guys right. who's bumping That's the right. clock. That's right. No so. pitch clock out yep. here, Kyle. Yep. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, uh, out of the lineup for the 10 caps today is Sanders Wilson. Sanders goes to St. Francis. He's hurt. He broke his arm right before the last oh, game of the season. Uh, but... He was a great player for the 10 Caps this year, one of their best outfielders, and he was really holding his own in the middle of their order through most of the season. So a big loss for them, and shout out to Sanders. Huge shout out to Sanders Wilson. Hope he gets better through his rehab as Ryan Swinbank fouls that one back. Count goes to two and two as he has Nico throwing a little bit more pitches in this inning, but yeah, you're right, Greg. Not a lot of pitches thrown for him. I don't have the exact uh, pitch count. I haven't been that good, but <laughs> I well, wish I did. And Ooh, he, and he can go 85, yep. and he just walked the last hitter in the lineup. Actually, he, oh he no, hit him. he he's, hit him. Oh, he's bringing him back. He Swinbank claimed he got hit. Umpire gotcha. did not agree. Ball three, full count. I love when that happens. That still happens to this day, too, at the professional level. The, the hitter will go down the, the first base. Umpire's like, where are you going? Usually you trust them when they take off running down to first, but uh, umpire saw that one clearly, didn't think it hit him. I couldn't tell from our angle. Yeah, they've, got a, they've got us down the uh, the right field line here, Kyle, looking into the sun. So It is not easy. I agree with you with this angle. Ah, uh, ball four. Oh, man. That is really big in a game like this. Here in the top of the fourth to get your leadoff hitter on before the top of your order. Nico might be tiring a little. He just he gave a really tough at bat right there. Fouled a few pitches off, took him full. Great at bat by Swinbank. Yeah, and that's the first walk of the game assigned to Nico as we back we're back at the top of the order for the 10 caps. That one swung over the right side. Good swing. Gotten by the second baseman and got the out. Oh, look at that. He's going to third. Tag down. Oh. Got him. What a play. Swinbank thought he got in under that. No argument from Dwyer. Cool as a cucumber at third base. Man. That was an aggressive base running play, but you want to get to third there with one out. I don't blame him for doing it. That play was slow developing. Great play by Declan Breen at second, and what a throw by Lucas Grandmaier to third. Colt Bell put that tag right down on him. He didn't reach out and try to tag him. He went straight down, put the tag on him, and that sold it. Whether he got him or not, that sold it. 
fantastic play there by the Mighty Muscles, and that goes to show you right there why they've been the number one seed so far this season. They have just been nails this year. And, you know, everybody says that the best two teams never make it, and, and I, I thought that was silly. You'd expect the best two teams to make it, uh, especially with pitchers as good as these two teams have. As my brother says, baseball is a little bit fickle, Greg. It is, it is, but less so in this league than it is in the Pee Wees before this where the machine is a big leveler, or it, or it levels above this when the, the talent level is a little more even. Oh, could just not, not able to hold on to that. Uh, that was third baseman Colt Bell. Hard ground ball there from Wilcott. He hit that ball really hard. We'll give, him a, we'll give him a single there for Wilcott. That's, nice your, that's your scoring, Kyle. I'm a little tougher. <laughs> I'm going to be nice to the kids today. I'm going to be nice to the kids. The we Peewees, we don't have an error button in Peewees. Everything's a hit. And you throw it away three times, that's a homer. But out here, we're a little tougher. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, uh, to the backstop. And he's off. Really good job by, by Everett to pay attention there and get to second base on that wild pitch. Everett's a really good player. He's been a real leader on this team this year. Wouldn't be surprised to see him make a big play to win this game. All right, Everett's on second base with two outs. He's a great base runner. Expect him to score on any hit. 2-1 count. Pitch from Nico, and that swung on. Foul down the left field side. McFall can get a big hit right here. Really break this game open. Yeah, the catcher, McFall, went down swinging his first at bat here with a 2-2 count, two outs. Ooh, he took a tough pitch right there. A little inside, full count. All right, Matthew, you got to be swinging here with full count. I gotta, would. you got to have this guy looking to drive that run in, two outs. Yeah. And he was. Good cut, really good cut. Freeman there. gives it a full 360 at, at first base. Wow. Frustrating inning right there, getting the guy thrown out at third and then the strikeout to end it. Great, great job by Nico Juarez to get out of that one that was runner at second base. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning, still scoreless here. Muscle zero, 10 cap zero here on Vibe Live. All right, welcome back to the bottom of the fourth inning. Tin Cap went to a different pitcher. I'll let, I'll let Greg talk to you about it for a little bit. I, I, I was expecting him to do this at some point. It's interesting to see him do it now. Freeman was absolutely nails tonight for the Tin Caps. Went three scoreless, was strong out there. But like I said, he's been their number two this year. How long do you keep your number one on the bench? I thought they might let Freeman keep going, given how well he's pitching, but they've gone to Wolcott. He's been awesome this year, one of the best pitchers in the league, and, and I, don't, I don't fault Freeman for that move. Looks like we've got Matthew McFall at shortstop now for the 10 caps, and Dylan Freeman will fill in behind the plate at catcher. So the particular rules in the minors may have something to do with this move right here. They want to move Freeman to catcher after he pitches. And if they let him go, if they let him throw one pitch in the fourth inning, he can't play catcher the rest of the game under the minors rules. So that may have something to do with this pitching change right here. 
Very interesting. As Graham McGinnis is up, he takes the first two pitches one and one. And yeah, really interesting change there by the 10 caps as that one's low for strike two. Count goes to one and two. Not unexpected, but Freeman was pitching great. He yeah. definitely could have kept going, but you want him there at catcher. He's been really good at catcher for them this year too. And Wolcott's been their best pitcher. Yep, and goes down, striking out there for Graham. Back up to the top of the lineup for the Mighty Muscles with Hayes Toomey. Graham McGinnis, who we just saw there at the plate, is a great artist of jujitsu. So watch out with him, guys. Yeah, I'm not messing with that guy. Hayes Toomey goes to second Baptist. Hayes plays a lot of baseball. He plays for some select teams here in town. You can usually see him rocking his Texans gear. And this one's hit down the right side. First baseman's got it, and he's just going to tag him. Called him out. Called him out. Not sure he tagged him. A little bit of three unassisted there, and that's two outs for the 10 caps. He probably jumped out of the baseline there, even if he didn't tag him. We didn't get a definitive ruling from the umpire there at first, <laughs> other than the out call. No definitive ruling there. And up to the plate now for the Mighty Muscles. The catcher, number one, Steel Howell. I like that I like that name for your catcher. Is he's got to be an Iron Man back there, and he takes the first one for ball one. Steel Howell, little known fact about Steel, aspiring bull rider. Wow. Yep. He I didn't I didn't get that from the coaches. That's that's my personal research on Steel. Okay. He's a bull rider in training. He goes to Memorial Drive Elementary. He is a quiet kid who wow. rips the ball and plays a great center field. What a play by Johnny Goodrum in center field. Line drive, ripped by Steele, and Johnny was right there. No hesitation. Great play by Johnny Goodrum. That lefty in center field will be playing first base for most teams out here, and he showed why right there. Fantastic, fantastic. Man, what a quick inning. Well, we're done with the fourth inning, still scoreless. We go to the top of the fifth here on Vibe Live. Back to the top of the fifth inning, still scoreless here. Top of the fifth, and new pitcher on for the Mighty Muscles. I'll go ahead and let Greg talk about it for a little bit. I'm a little surprised at this one. I mean, Hayes Toomey has taken over for Nico. Hayes is fantastic. Like I was saying, I think he's one of the best pitchers in the league. But it's hard to take Nico out, given how well he was pitching. He threw a lot more pitches, as you pointed out last inning, Kyle, and that might have had something to do with it. But he did not have to come out of this game. This is a choice by Breen and, and Levitt, and I can't fault him. This kid is awesome. He is one of the best players in this league. He's a hard-throwing left-hander. He's one of the best pitchers in the league, but he's thrown fewer innings than two other guys on his own team. Wow. Wow. So they're, they're saving his arm as that one's high and away for ball one. And Nico goes to third base. Yeah, I thought Nico, Nico Juarez did fantastic. Those he was great. Innings. What a great season on the mound from Nico, and he really put an exclamation point on it tonight. And first pitch. Oh, Freeman didn't like that one. Freeman didn't like it, thought that was low. Big call right there, one and one. 
Pop up. Can of corn. Breen back. What a play by Declan Breen. He didn't get back quick enough, but he made a good quick move right at the end to get his glove up and make that play. The Muscles play a couple different guys at second. They'll play Oliver Anders there. They'll play Declan Breen there. Both those guys have been doing a great job. Now we got Dino Dwyer up for the 10 caps. Great catch, Declan. Great catch. Declan has gotten a lot better. He's a really impressive player this year. Both these teams have a bunch of fourth graders who have really been big contributors for them. It's not just the older kids. Oh, a little attempted bunt there from Dino. Lefty on lefty matchup. And he anyway. did. What did I say? Solid line drive to single to center field. Great single from Dino. Green and and Levitt, it's all gravy for them. They've had an incredible season. They've dominated the league. They've done a great job. If win or lose tonight, they've, they've succeeded. Oh, count goes to 0-1. Takes that one for a ball. That's Everett Casas at the plate. Count goes to 1-1 one one with Dino Dwyer at first. And I'll tell you, Dino's dad over there at third base, not concerned. Feeling good about it. Swing and a miss. Oh, he fouled that. Yep. Yep. Nice job from Everett Casas. Nice cut. Just not able to, to put the bat to the ball. But but here, here count. here's where the rubber meets the road for a lot of these minors teams is in the middle, back into the order. Can these guys make some good contact and move runners along? And if they can't, is the pitcher going to throw it to the backstop and help those guys move? Nice play by Freeman. That ball was right in the dirt. Oh, excuse me, not Freeman back there. That's Steel Howl for oh, the good. muscles. No, no worries. Count goes to two and two. And that one outside with. Scott Freeman helping the umpire there with the call. Full count now. That's a fair ball. Tough play. Called him safe. Not sure what the call was. Home play to saying he's out. They're going to have to talk about this. Did he run? Are getting together. I think they're calling him out because he ran inside the baseline. The home plate umpire is calling him out because he ran inside the baseline. Freeman wow. is apoplectic. He can't believe the call. He's going to appeal it. He's going to ask for help here. That, I haven't seen a call like that all year long. The first base umpire called him out, or called him safe, excuse me. I, I couldn't see why. He did the, call him safe. He yeah. called him safe, but the home plate umpire said he's out because of the way he ran down the line. He was running in fair territory, and they called him out. Freeman's not happy about that call. I can't blame him. That's a tough call. Haven't seen that call made all year. And interesting decision. Uh, Dwyer goes back to first, so they're not even going to let. Wait, Dwyer are they saying that's second? a foul ball? Is that what they're saying? The the scoreboard gave him an out there. I'm not sure. Yeah, scoreboard gave him an out, and then and then. And Dwyer it was a full count. So yeah, yeah, no, he was out. He was out. This is the next the next yep. hitter. I'm not quite sure why the runner had to go back to first, but I guess because of the interference call, he had yes. to go back. Not sure about that call either. So we got Johnny Goodrum up, a uh, runner at first is Dino Dwyer, two outs, count goes to two and one. Let's see it, Johnny. And backs out of the batter's box, uh, that one he's in there for strike two, count goes to two and two, two outs, twos across the board here for Johnny Goodrum. Ball in the dirt from Toomey. And Full count. Yep, yep. Full count here for Johnny Goodrum. I don't know why Dino Dwyer went back to first because, I mean, 
He should be at second base hit, possibly scores him here. But You would think with the interference call that he would still be allowed to go to second base. So. I, yeah, I called that batter interference, and it's, it's kind of interesting because nobody really looked at Dwyer. He just ran back to first, so I don't know if it was like him just – Ball thinking, four. You know? Yeah, well, there he is there. He was going on that pitch all the way, too. Yep. Full count, two outs. All right, we got a runner on second base. That's a big deal in this game, Kyle. Yes, sir. I agree with you there. And that's Dino Dwyer at second. Connor Simmons coming up to the plate. Simmons makes contact, fouls the ball off. He's got two strikes on him. But like I was telling you earlier, Kyle, Connor Simmons has 18 walks this year. He can work a deep count, make it really tough on these pitchers. Great eye, two and two. This is a huge moment in this game right here, Kyle. Two, two with two runners on and two outs and a zero, zero game in the fifth. Connor Simmons gets on base a lot. That's what the 10 caps need right here. Hey, these two strike foul balls from, from Connor Simmons. Taking tough pitches, full count. I mean, this is what he's done all year long. I mean, I saw some kids this year hardly swung the bat, uh, didn't feel real confident in themselves, and those guys only only walked eight, nine times this year. Look at Connor wow. Simmons earn that walk. I mean, he didn't get that by just going up there and taking. He fouled off some tough two strike pitches to get that walk. Incredible talent from him. Really impressive. Um, but on another note for the Mighty Muscles, that's that's back-to-back -back walks for Hayes Toomey. And now he's sitting in a bases loaded situation with Leo coming up to the plate. Bases juiced. So we'll see how Hayes responds. First first pitch fouled back to the backstop for strike one. Getting strike one there is huge. Yep, I agree. I agree because he's, he's in a little bit of a pickle here. But he's been great this year. I, I'd have confidence in him throwing strikes right here. And that was a tough walk Simmons earned on him. He threw a lot of tough pitches. That one's hit to the second baseman. Declan's right got side. it. Yeah. What a play by Declan Breen. Locked down second base. Great play by Declan. Out at first. There's some confusion on the field. The umpire's out talking to the pitcher. Oh, it looks like he's saying he had called time. Time was called before that pitch. That play did not count. Oh, wow. Wow, good, really good play by Breen. I thought it ended the inning. But apparently the home plate umpire is saying he had called time before the pitch was thrown. So we're back to no balls, one strike, two outs, bases loaded. Huge moment in this game for the 10 caps. A line drive from Kanagani. What a play by Cole Bell. Reaching up at shortstop, going back on the outfield grass. What an incredible play. What a rip by Leo Kanagani. I thought he'd broken the game open. I thought he'd broken the game open, too. That was a really nice line drive there from Leo. He just hit it right to the shortstop. And tremendous, tremendous play there by Colt Bell. Incredible play by Colt. Moved from third to short when they changed pitchers. What a play. What a play. We're still scoreless through five. Go to the top of the sixth inning with the Mighty Muscles coming up. Or bottom of the fifth, excuse me. You're listening here on Vibe Live.
Welcome. Shot from Lucas Grandmaier to the wall. Leading us off. He's going to second. He's going to go to third. He's going to go to third. What a play. Oh, my God. Triple on the first pitch of the inning from Lucas. What a huge hit. The Muscles fans are going nuts. It's the bottom of the fifth, and we finally have something. We've got a runner on third with nobody out. Good hitters coming up from the Muscles. Great, great hit by Lucas there. Coming back a little bit late. He drove that down the left field side. Left fielder couldn't get to it. We got with that speed. He got all the way to third. We got a little color, Michael or uh, Kyle, but between innings from Coach Freeman. Uh, the call apparently on that play last inning was that the the batter kicked the ball in fair territory, meaning he was out, and that's why they had Dwyer go back to first base. That was the call. I didn't see it. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I couldn't tell. Uh, you're right. We got and we get to for correct, correct. We got a tough angle out here over here in the left field kind of foul area. So it is tough for us to kind of see everything as Nico Nico Juarez uh, swings and misses that strike. But look at this. We got a we got a nothing nothing ball game. Bottom of the fifth. The infield is back with nobody out. They're relying on Everett Wolcott to strike Nico out right here, and he just blew two pitches right by him. Huge moment in this game right here. No balls, two strikes on Nico. Nico just needs to hit a ground ball up the middle past the pitcher, and they've got the lead in this ballgame. See how he does with the 0-2 count here and the pitch. That's in the dirt. What a play by Dylan Freeman. Just saved a run there at catcher. That was a tough one. That wasn't a short hop. That was an in-between hop, and he moved his body, got in front of it, and fielded it with his glove. That was a great play by the catcher right there. Got by Dylan Freeman there to stay in front of that one as the count goes to one and two. And swung Swing on and miss. Yeah. Freeman didn't catch it, but he kept it in front of him. Oh, Coach Breen's frustrated there. That's a tough one. And they've still only got one out, though. Runner on third with one out. And we got Taylor Baskin coming up for the muscles. Struck out her first at bat. She's not going to strike out right here, Kyle. She's about to give the muscles the lead. Swing and a miss right there from Taylor. All she needs is just get it in the air. The She's outfield. been such a good hitter this year, Kyle. You got to have confidence in her if you're Levitt and Breen. And, and she it. crushes it to right field, way over the right fielder's head to the wall. Three hopper to the wall. Everett Casas has it at the wall. She's turning second, going to third. The relay throw is late to third. She slides in safe. Connor Simmons makes the catch. Woo. She's celebrating the first runs on the board, Kyle. And the muscles are used to this. This is what they do. They grind you down. They pitch great. They play great defense. And then these hitters, they come through. Look at T Taylor Baskin right there. Only girl in the league crushing a three-hopper to the wall. That's the hardest hit ball we've seen all day. Hey, Taylor Baskin better go home and get some Baskin Robbins tonight after that After that, that's swing right. because She's... she drilled that one over the right fielder's head. That was and a... that scored the first run of the game. That was the such an incredible play by her. Her brothers, yep. her dad are going to be so proud of her. What an incredible hit. She was great in the peewee. She's a great catcher. She's not playing catcher tonight because they've got such a good catcher behind the plate and steal how. But she showed what she's worth right there off one of the best pitchers in the league in Everett Wolcott. Fantastic hit there by Taylor Baskin to get the first, not only first run, but first RBI of the game as well for the Muscles. Scoring Lucas. Still Good only one out, Kyle. Earlier. Yep. And that grounder's going to drive in the second run. They get the out at first, but that's two for the Muscles as Taylor scores. Great hit right there by Declan Breen to drive in the second run. Declan's been great tonight and all season for the Muscles. Yeah, really, really nice job. Just got to put the bat on the ball there with less than two outs. Put it on the ground on the right side. You got to give it to the. Easy. You got to give it to the Muscles and these coaches. Levin and Breen have just been awesome all year. They nailed the draft. They they have just been amazing. Every move they've made has been right. Incredible season for them. Really, really great, great job there by Levin and Breen and. And that was, that was his son, Declan, who was up right there to get that RBI, if you don't mind me saying, Greg. Oh, not at all. That was a great play. So 1-1 one, one count now. We have Oliver Anders up. Nobody on base, but Oliver can, can keep this rally alive here for the muscles. Oliver's a good hitter. Well, y'all say two, two out rally, rally. I mean, that's what we're oh, here the, for, the right? The kids like to chant, that's yep. for sure. Ball in the dirt there from Wolcott. And they're going to have Toomey on the mound in the sixth to close them out. Two run lead feels like a seven or eight run lead in a game like this. Wolcott looks a little rattled by those couple runs coming in. He's gone 3-1 on uh, Oliver here. 
I will say I think that was the right decision, though, to go ahead and, and, and pull Nico out of the game. Or, or, excuse me, pull Dylan out of the game there to go to Everett. Uh, can't can't blame him. Those were some really, really nice hits there uh, from the muscles. Yeah, I mean, their hitters came through. Everett's been great for him all year. You'd want him on the mound in these key moments if you're the 10 caps. And their fans and coaches know why he's there. Walk for Oliver Anders right there with two outs. Coming up now for the Mighty Muscles, uh, the play of the play of the game for me here, Colt Bell over at shortstop that last inning. Fantastic grab going up in the air to, to, to stop that from getting into the gap. And that moment seems even bigger when you see what they've done this inning, right? I mean, that, yeah. was, that was two or three runs right there on that one play. Oliver's going. He was going on that pitch, yeah, and he what? stole it. The Freeman didn't catch it cleanly, but Anders was going all the way, never hesitated. That was a real steal right there. Uh, with two outs and, and nobody uh, and just a runner on first, they wanted to get him in a scoring position for Colt Bell. Smart play by Levitt there at first base. Oh, and that one hits Colt Bell a little bit high. He's going to run down to first base like the tough man he is and take it. He did. He didn't rub it at all. Ran down the line. Might be time for a little talk here from, from Freeman and Dwyer. Yeah. Yep, I agree. I agree with you. Runners at first and second. Hey, if you're a Tin Caps fan, it's not over at all. I mean, a couple, you know, you got a triple from Lucas, a triple from Taylor, and, and those two runs scored. Other than that, I mean, Tin Caps still have all, all ample opportunity in the world here to come back. And the Tin Caps have been one of the best hitting teams in the league. That's one of the reasons they're here. Uh, so they got to have confidence in their ability to hit. They just got to get out of this inning. And now they got Harrison Levitt up there. I told you earlier in this game, Kyle, about Harrison. He's got one of the sweetest looking swings in this league. Yep. And it wouldn't surprise me at all to see him pop one in the outfield right here. The lefty stands in. The first one he fouls back to the backstop. Count is at 0-1. We'll see what Harrison can do here with runner in scoring position. That one just a little bit ahead of that off-speed pitch. Swung on and missed for strike two. Yeah, it looked like he took something off there. That was a good pitch by Wolcott. Now he's got him 0-2. And this one's popped up into the infield. Tough Who's play. Nice play by Wolcott. He took over. He and McFall collided a little bit there, but Wolcott knew that he could catch that ball. Hey, we still got a ball game here, Kyle. Yep, pop up to the pitcher. But really, really big inning there for the Mighty Muscles. Triple for Lucas, triple for Taylor, and an RBI from Declan Brain. And we go to the top of the sixth inning. Ten caps, zero, Mighty Muscles, two on Vibe Live. All right, welcome back in to Post Oak Little League Miners semifinal championship between uh, the Ten Caps and the Mighty Muscles. Really good job there by the Mighty Muscles in the bottom of the fifth to get some runs on the board. And now it's the Ten Caps' job to answer as we have coming up to the plate uh, number six, Gray Farina. Ten Caps have the 10 and 11 hitters up, and then they get back to the top of the order. Can one of these guys get on base, set the table, in front of their best hitters. Nice eye there by Gray to take that pitch for ball one. Now with ball one, you should expect him to take this pitch too. He did, and it was in the dirt. That's 2-0. and oh. Under no circumstances would I would I let this hitter swing a bat right here with 2-0. Oh. Yep. Got to make Hayes prove he can throw a strike right here. He was taken. He took something off that. It looked like a lob pitch. Not a, not a pure curveball from Hayes, but like he just lobbed it in there for the first strike. Good benefit to outside the changeup. Tough spot to throw a changeup. Oh, he threw another one. I think he's just lobbing it in there because he can do it. He's, he, got, he's got the accuracy. He knew the kid wasn't swinging, and he just lobbed two in there for strikes. 
He did it again, strike three. Wow, that is really impressive from Hayes. He didn't throw his fastball there. He just lobbed, you know, it wasn't a curveball either. He just lobbed three pitches right in there, knowing that what he needed to do was throw strikes, and he got him out. Hayes just playing a little pitch and catch there uh, with Steele Howell, and that's the first out of the inning. For the now, now this is the 11th hitter, Ryan Swinbank. He threw another changeup on him. He is dominating with this changeup. Ryan Swinbank is a good hitter. Don't let the fact that he's hitting 11 in this lineup uh, confuse you. He can hit the ball. Another off-speed pitch from Hayes. He's not throwing him a fastball. This is incredible strategy from the muscles. I don't know whether he's calling his own pitches or not. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I agree with you. The last five strikes yeah. have been off-speed pitches. He's got him 0-2 with one out. Huge moment right here. Ball one. one. He threw another like off-speed. That one just didn't kind of finish through with it. That's right. If he threw a hard fastball, yeah. this kid can throw 55 miles an hour. That's what they had him clocked at in the tryouts. He's one of the hardest throwing kids in the league. He can do this. But he didn't need to. Oh, and he got him on a changeup in the dirt. What an incredible couple of hitters from Hayes Toomey. And the Tin Caps are down to their last out. This could be the last hitter of the minor season. It's been a great season. These two teams deserve to be the ones on this field right now. And it's great to see this close game. Either way this goes, these teams have had a great year. Dwyer and Freeman have been awesome. They've had an incredible season. They've, they've delivered for their fans, the parents, their kids. This has been a great year for the Tin Caps. Yeah, huge year for the Tin Caps. Shout out to them as Dylan Freeman, the starting pitcher on the mound today. And they're still in this ball game. Ball Dylan, yeah, Dylan scored more runs than anybody else in this league this year. If you don't think he can get on in front of these other hitters and score a couple runs here, you haven't been paying attention to the Tin Caps. He got him swinging and missing on another breaking ball in the dirt there, 1-1. Takes a couple of cut swings here in the batter's box. I don't think I'd throw a fastball if I were Hayes, and he didn't. Yeah. But no. Dylan's too good of a hitter. He took that one in the dirt. He may have to bring his fastball here to Dylan. And the 2 1 counts. Hung on and missed by Freeman. Strike two. Down to their last strike, the 10 caps. What a moment in this ball game. 2 2 count, two outs. Two to nothing ball game in the six. Here comes Hayes Toomey. Ball put in play to Hayes. He's going to run it himself to first base, and the muscles are the champions of the Miners. They're throwing their hats and their gloves in the air. The crowd is storming the fear field. What an incredible season from the muscles. From, from start to finish, they were the best team in the league this year. They deserve this. What an incredible season from, from Levitt and Breen. They deserve it. These kids have been awesome this year. They were great pitching, fielding, and they did just enough. Taylor Baskin with a big hit. Declan Breen with the other ribby to win this ball game. What, what a great way to end the season with these two teams putting on a great show, just like they did all season long. Fantastic job by the Mighty Muscles. And if you don't mind me saying, I know that we had some really big hits from, from Taylor Baskin, Lucas Grandma, and, and, uh, and Declan Breen. But let me tell you this, that play of the game was Colt Bell. I mean, this is baseball and defense wins it, and Colt Bell able to get that line drive because that could have scored some runs, but he was able to get that ball and save the Mighty Muscles from the 10 caps, and, and they end up being victorious. And gutsy call from Levitt and Breen to pull Nico after four yep. incredible innings. Yep. And Hayes Toomey, he walked a couple guys, but he did what he's been doing all year close out wins for the Muscles, and they are deserving champions of the Miners at Post Oak this year. Really great scene out here at Post Oak Little League. That's going to do it for me and Greg Moore. I'm Kyle Harris. Greg, anything else you want to say to the fans, families out here at Post Oak Little League? Great season. Off. Can't wait to see you next year. Watch out for the hoppers.